guys, thanks for checking out my channel. My name is Janelle Davis. If you'd like to check out other content that I have, you can visit my TikTok page, Janelle.Davis, and you can visit over there, or you can visit me on Instagram where I'll post some scripture and different things like that. But I want to encourage you today something that I learned, something that's new to me and that gave me a lot of understanding and peace uh, by reading the Word of God, which always Jesus does, um, and just some revelation and insight I wanted to share because it was really exciting. So I'm reading through the Gospels and spending some time chewing on them and understanding God's ministry. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or Matthew, Mark, yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the four chapters there kind of give a different point of view because there's different authors, a different point of view on Jesus's ministry. And it will say kind of similar things, kind of the same thing, maybe using the same wording, but it's different points of views on the same happenings, the same parable, the same different things that Jesus talked about and performed miracles and deliverances and raising of the dead of, diff, uh, of people. And um, there's a part where it says that uh, Judas, it says the plot to kill Jesus, talking about in Luke 22, Judas betraying Jesus. He was um, getting established with um, being told that he'd be paid money to um, to betray Jesus and turn him in so that he would be arrested and killed because the Roman Empire and the Pharisees and people didn't believe in Jesus. They wanted him dead. They wanted to get rid of him and um, get him arrested and make him stop doing what he was doing. But when that had occurred, the chapters after that talk about Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper. So talking about um, this is in the time of Passover. And traditionally what Passover is in the Jewish tradition was it was eating unleavened bread and partaking in a ceremony, partaking uh, in this symbol of the uh, deliverance of the ancestors, deliverance of the Israelites when they were delivered out of the wilderness and God saved them and took care of them. So this Passover was the Passover celebration of the Israelites being delivered and liberated from uh, their enemies. And it's interesting how before Jesus was taken, you know, you got Judas in the background working with the, you know, the, the Romans and getting everything all situated. He's getting paid and he's saying, well, this is how I'm going to show who the man is that you need to arrest. Um, Judas ends up kissing him on the face and then it identified that he was the, the one claiming to be the Messiah and they were going to arrest him. While all this is going on, Jesus knew what was going on because he's it's part of the Trinity. Jesus in, institutes the Lord's Supper. And if you've ever been a part of church where you receive the bread in the cup, it's to represent Jesus's body, him dying on the cross for us to partake in the bread that will sustain us and fulfill us and feed us for life. And then you have the blood, which is the cleansing of our lives and making us new, white as snow, making us new because of Jesus's blood that is shed on the cross. And I find that interesting in the midst of being set up during Passover, he sets up, Jesus sets up the Lord's Supper and he tells them, tells the disciples, he's with his most intimate uh, people that he ministered to. He's with the disciples and he's saying to them in relationship, I'm going to make a covenant with you. I'm going to make a solidification of our relationship together that says this bread represents my body, what I'm doing for you and you will be fed for life. And here's the blood that will cleanse you because you're sinners, but I will make you cleanse. I will make you new when you give everything over to me. And I find that interesting that Jesus did this during Passover, which was traditionally the moment of Israel's deliverance. So Jesus did, does this and celebrates with his disciples that he was going to be the ultimate deliverer. So you may already know that. You may have already studied the Bible and you may have already read that. But I felt so empowered by Jesus and so aware of his mercy and his love. And he says to us, he doesn't say just do it once. He says to continually remember 
what I'm about to do for you because I am the deliverer. I've been sent from heaven to deliver you. And that is the main goal for Jesus dying on the cross because man fell, Adam and Eve fell into sin, their eyes were open and it let sin into the world. And that's why we have such evil in the world. But God became the ultimate deliverer. He surrendered, Jesus surrendered his life. He could have made it all stop, but he became what some theologians call as the second Adam to reconcile us to reconcile us and bring us back to Jesus. So I want to encourage you to go read Luke chapter 22. Go ahead and read all the gospels, read the Bible in general, but read Luke chapter 22 and watch the progression of how that whole chapter talks about the instituting of the Lord's Supper. And right after that, it's interesting how Jesus talks about that, that he's been sent as the deliverer. He is the ultimate celebration of Passover, which is what we experience today. But right after that, it talks about the disciples started arguing over who was greater than the other person. And I just find that interesting that even though Jesus says, I am the ultimate, I am the deliverer of your life, that we as humans go right back to our sinful life and start arguing about who's greater than each other. And Jesus talks about that, um, you will eat and drink at his table and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So Jesus is saying after all of the Lord's Supper and he's taught instituting um, the symbolism of drinking, uh, drinking uh, the wine for his blood, representing his blood, cleansing of us and then taking part of the bread, which is forever life fulfillment and being fed for life in his body that he talks about that. And he says that because of me, you'll be able to sit with me at the right hand of the father and be with me in heaven when you give your life over to the Lord. So I just find that interesting how even this great thing happens with the Lord's supper that the disciples still went into arguing with each other who was greater. And God is no respecter of person. He doesn't play favorites and he jumps right into teaching them, you know, Whoever is the greatest one is the one that serves. And Jesus was the ultimate greatest uh, example of what it is to be a leader and serve. And I have other videos about that on my YouTube as well. What is leadership according to the Bible? Because it's very different from what the world says. So guys, I hope you're encouraged. This was something that was really encouraging to me. It made me happy. Um, it instilled a lot of hope in my life. It instilled um, just a desire to go after God even more and understand more about his words and what he uh, performed on earth and what he did for the disciples and what he's done for us. Guys, God bless. Catch you on the next video.